Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, when while you were having your lunch, I worked on this one. Uh, so here is what what uh, you know we were doing earlier when I was saying that uh, you can create a lot of interactive stuff uh, in uh, using uh, Scratch and Microbit. So I have sort of completed that project that we were discussing and I can show you. So I have my micro bit here and this micro bit first, I have done the same thing. So I, when I press A, my cat, my sprite moves and not only the sprite moves, I've added like it will face in the right direction. It will also have the walking animation and things like that. Okay. Then I have my, uh, then I have the touch sensor. Sorry, the touch sensor. So what is happening is uh, there is also the light sensor, but the light sensor works like this. So when the light stops, you you know the backdrop changes. Okay, and then um, there is the raindrop sensor. So when I have rain, the the expression of the cat changes. Okay, of the sprite changes. And I'm saying these are small, small things, but if you notice when the raindrops hits the ground, it pops up, right? So I'm, I'm just saying that you can, I can create a very simple thing like what we were doing in the morning, or I can go deeper and deeper into the, uh, you know, the programming and the costumes and things like that. So this is basically when the raindrop is hitting the brown color, I have, I have a few other costumes and that is what is giving you this kind of an effect where it seems as if, uh, you know, the rain is flashing. Okay. And then um, there is the last sensor, which is the smoke sensor in Q2. Okay, so when when my smoke sensor detects, then my game also has, uh, you know, fire, right? So I'm just saying that this is sort of uh, bringing it all together and like see the the expression of the cat also changes. So I'm saying those are small small things, but you can go into great detail uh, when you when you when you are doing this. Okay, and this one is using uh, all like it. I'm br bringing it all together. I am using a battery pack. I am powering these uh, these sensors with the battery pack. Uh, I'm not drawing any current from my micro bit. And then I'm using this uh, as an analog out and this as a digital out. Okay, so I've like brought it all together. And if, if now, if you look at the code, okay. Um, so I'm not going into detail, but I'm just saying that here I am using light intensity. So this is onboard sensor. Okay. Uh, here in the rain one, I am using pin zero and I'm simply putting it as a digital out. So I'm just checking if the pin is high or low. And then uh, that was the fire sensor. And then for the uh, rain sensor, uh, I'm using the analog out and I'm checking the value. So when I'm, I'm saying, when there is a specific value like less than certain value, then things are happening. And um, what I can do is I can share this uh, uh, SB3 file with you later, uh, but it will only work with stretch three. It will not work with the normal scratch because in normal scratch, I'm using micro bit more extension here. So you need this extension. Okay. So this was just a small project. I thought I'll just show you the whole thing of how to uh, bring it all together. So I'm just going to take a minute's pause because I'm going to set up the next one uh, and then we will continue. Okay, so we are coming to uh, our next project and uh, what I have done here is uh, we are going to use the um, L298N motor driver board, okay? 
but uh, we are going to i'm doing it in reverse because i wanted to show you the complete project and uh, then i'll i'll explain step by step how you can make this one so i have set it up for two things first is that i can control uh, so, so what i've done is i have got only one wheel working uh, only one wheel working because i realized that uh, i am uh, you know using micro bit board so when i'm using micro bit board i only get pin 0 1 and 2 but to run both the motors i need four pins but i don't get four pins so i'm using only one wheel but if you have a connector uh, like this and i i deliberately didn't use it because i was not sure if you are carrying the motor driver board that you have uh, so i have i'm just showing you for one wheel but the logic is exactly the same uh, so you can operate both the wheels and it will work like a proper car okay so for now i'm saying the first one that i have done here is uh, that when i will press button a on my micro bit my uh, wheel turns forward and again it is turning nicely it's just that the camera does not take it uh, pick it up well so it looks as if there's a jitter but there is no jitter it's just revolving nicely and on pin b uh, on button b it's a stop but then hopefully this will work i have also added a functionality where forward sorry okay one second let me just forward okay i'll just figure out why uh... so I, I also added this it was working perfectly fine uh, earlier so i'll just check later why this is not working um uh, but anyway stop So basically this was a teachable uh, uh, machine model where when I say forward, it will go forward. And when I say stop, it will stop. Uh, but that one is not working perfectly all right right now. So I'll show it to you later. But let's, let's look at um, uh, how to make this and I'll explain it step by step. So um, let's start with this L298N. So you do have a motor driver board uh, for micro bit and making it with that board is uh, you know easier because it's easier to program but the thing with L298N board is it's a very cheap board it's like 200 rupees or something and you can use it for both uh, Arduino and for micro bit okay um, so I'll just explain how the board works not how the board works but how are you supposed to connect uh, uh, L298N and then it's a very simple command uh, to operate motors with this. So you can operate uh, motors or I think even servos. So the way this will work is that you will connect one motor to these two terminals here. So on the left side you will connect one motor here and on the right side you will connect the second motor. But like me, if you don't have a breakout board right now, then you can just test it with one single motor, just connect one motor. And then here you've got three more pins here. So you will put, so, so the reason why we use uh, a motor driver board is because we can't take, you know, these DC motors, they, they draw a lot of current. So these DC motors, they're drawing a lot of current. I can't connect them directly to a micro bit or to an Arduino. So that is why we have to use this motor driver board and this motor driver board, you will have its own power supply. So that is why we will use a battery pack to power uh, this board. And then we will connect the motors to this board. And that is the reason why 
they will be drawing current from the motor driver board and not from the micro bit. So you will connect one motor here and you can connect the second motor here. And on these three, you will connect uh, the positive terminal of the battery here. And it does, it, you will see it says uh, VCC and the negative terminal of the battery here. So positive and negative. The third one, don't use it right now. That one is basically five volts out. So the reason that's a very nice one uh, is because if I wanted to make a robotic car, then I don't want my, my Arduino or my micro bit to be connected to my computer USB. I want an independent power supply so that everything is on the board. So from that perspective, you can have five volts out. And if I had a, a Arduino or a, a, a micro bit, I would put it on the vehicle itself and power it by taking the power out from here. But I'm saying right now, let's not get into that. We will just power it from the USB and we will just uh, run the motor uh, to check everything. And um, the reason I'm saying don't do that is because it becomes a bit complicated. There is a jumper. There is a jumper here inside this one. And when you take it out, the board behaves in a different way. And when the jumper is in, it behaves in a different way. So I'm not getting into those details right now. I'm we are just making a very simple uh, thing so that you know how to operate motors with micro bit. Okay. Um, and then, so you've got the motors here, you've got the power supply here. And then on these, these pins, uh, there are four pins here. So two pins for one motor and two pins for the other motor. So these are the ones which will get connected to the micro bit. Okay. And again, we are going to make it simple. So we will just, uh, you know, uh, drive the motor, but you can also control the speed of the motors. There are two more jumpers here, one here, one here. So you have to take these out and connect them to two more pins on the Arduino or on the micro bit. But uh, let's, let's not get into that complicated thing. Let's keep it simple. So what I have done here is if I look at the whole thing, I've got two wires from my motor coming here to these pins. And I've got two wires from this motor connected here, connected here. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not driving this because I am using only two pins on my micro bit. Then from my battery pack, I've got my positive here and I've got my negative here. So positive and negative. The third one, nothing. Okay. We are not connecting anything to this one. Okay. And then I have taken these two pins here. Okay. Uh, the first two pins here and I have connected them to pin uh, one and pin two of my micro bit. And if I, if I had put this micro bit on a, uh, on a, uh, you know, a, a connector and I would have had, had access to all, all the pins of the micro bit, then I would have taken two more wires from here and connected it to, uh, two more, um, uh, GPIO pins of the micro bit. So micro bit has lots of GPIO pins. Okay. Micro bit has so many, all of these are pins. But what they have done is so that children can use it simply. They have made three of these pins uh, where you can put an alligator clip. The other small, small pins that you see, they are all pins, but these are all pins, but you can't access them till you put the micro bit onto a different board. Okay. Um, so this is all that we are doing. Uh, so I hope you understand the connections. And then from a programming point of view, uh, we are using a very simple, simple uh, command here. Uh, so uh, I, if I go into micro bit uh, more extension, then I just brought out this button called when button A is down. And then because my, my, um, my motor is connected to pin one and pin two, uh, if you go down here, you will find these pins. So you have set pin. So this is if I'm using a digital connection. Okay. If I want the pin to behave in a digital, as if it's getting a digital signal or it is giving out a digital signal. So I hope uh, you understand what I'm saying. I'm saying uh, these GPIO pins, I mean, these are GPIO pins because it, the, as the word says, they are general purpose input 
or output pin. So they can be both, they can be an input. And when we were using the soil sensor and all, we were using these pins as an input. So we were saying, connect the soil sensor and read the value. So there they were behaving as input pins and we use input pins both as digital input and analog input. And now we are using these pins as output. And in the output, I'm saying you can have uh, both. You can define the pin to have a digital output or an analog output. So here we don't want a digital output. We want an analog output. So uh, you also have this command, which is set the pins to some percentage uh, analog value. Okay, so it's a percentage. So what I have, the program I have written is, I'm saying on my micro bit, when, my, when I uh, push button A, P1, uh, give a 100% output. And P2, give a 0% output. Okay. So see, this is where, this is the reason why yesterday when I, you know, started with explaining the basic blocks and I was saying, um, you know, I was explaining uh, this, uh, I, I started with this, if you remember, and I told you that all we have to do is flip the polarity to make this go forward or reverse, clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm saying that is all I'm doing in this program. If I'm making one of these pins high, see how how the how how my my motor is connected. How these is my these two are connected to my motor. So my motors wires are here. They are connected here, and all I'm saying is I am saying that I'm supplying current to one and not to the other. And by doing that, I have completed my circuit. Okay. Did you understand that in, in this, when I'm saying make pin one high, so look at this, I have my, my motors connected here, pin one and pin two. So I have said make pin, uh, pin one hundred percent. That means like the pin is high pin is supplying uh, current. So my, this pin is supplying current is going in, it's coming out from here. And I've said the other pin I've said 0%. So my circuit is complete. Okay. And then my, my second command with pin B is that when button B is pressed, I'm simply saying, make both of them zero. So both of them zero means there, there is no current being supplied to the motor and they will stop working. Did you understand? So this is what I'm saying that uh, uh, you please try. Uh, so I'm just going to stop sharing.